So St. Irenaeus, okay, now this guy was pretty impressive and we're talking here around the years 125 AD to 202. So it's very early on in the life of the church, just a generation or two after the death of the first apostles. Now Irenaeus, when he was a young guy, he attended a school uh, in which a guy called Polycarp, you know, strange name, just bear with me anyway, but Polycarp was actually a disciple of the Apostle St. John. So it's pretty amazing and just shows how important these early church fathers are in their link with the very first apostles. Now, Arrhenius, he was Bishop of Lyon in France. And look at the guy is like any good pastor. He had a good solid sense of the apostolic doctrine, the teaching of the church. Yet at the same time, he was very enthusiastic about his mission as a pastor, you know, in terms of evangelization. But Arrhenius, he's often termed as the father of theology, and for good reason, because he wrote extensively on important and theological issues, particularly in his response to a movement called Gnosticism. Okay? Now these guys are pretty wild in their speculation about God, because they essentially thought that God was only discoverable through secret knowledge, and that the kind of Jesus that they presented could only really be understood by intellectual elite kind of thing. And that church teaching was just for simple-minded folk. And, you know, and that they are the ones who had the real teaching, the juicy teaching about uh, God, etc. That you kind of had to be an upper class and intellectually informed to understand it. I mean, totally off the wall stuff. And Arrhenius, he, this guy, he, he mustered all his efforts to combat this, this heresy. Which had pretty much run amok in the church at the time. Because, see, Gnostics, the Gnosticism, these guys, they attacked the very nature and identity of God uh, and of Jesus Christ himself. This was not on. Okay, and Bishop Arrhenius, he wrote a work called Against the Heresies. It's quite famous and you can still read it today. It's really good because he used sharp satire, he solid arguments of the faith, and he even ridiculed a lot of the heretics a little bit. Um, but most importantly, he stamped his work on the authority of the apostles, which from which his authority stems from, essentially. Now, you and I, like I said, we can still read his work today, and it's pretty much important to read because it's quite relevant to today's world. I mean, look, so many priests and so many bishops today, they're presenting the faith through the lens of their, their own opinionated interpretation, which obviously undermines the authority of the church, what Christ, through the apostles, has handed on to you and me. But also, it attacks church unity which we see very clearly, unfortunately, in many areas of our church today. You see, Arrhenius, guys, was very clear on the fact that the true gospel is the one that's imparted by the bishops of the church, who received it untouched through the line of succession, going right back to the first apostles. Um, the faith the bishops hand on, everybody, is what Christ gave to the first apostles, essentially. And the bishops, throughout all the ages, they are to safeguard and present it to all not just a select few, a few, not just a select few, and to present it untouched. So it's not theirs or anyone's to mess around with, uh, nor is it a privilege of a select few. Essentially, everyone, Arrhenius, what he was doing, he was simply backing up the teaching of Saint Paul. Remember, Saint Paul, he warned the faithful not to be led astray by teachers of strange doctrines, um, and stick to what the apostles have received from Christ Himself. And that's what Arrhenius was reinforcing the whole time. And that, that's the role of the bishop, you know, a modern apostle, to maintain the apostolic tradition. Because it's this gift, everybody, that the Lord guarantees you and me the transmission of the faith, the authentic faith that the apostles received from the Lord himself. That's why everybody at church can seem pretty heavy-handed at times when it comes to anybody claiming they know what Christ really meant when they set up the church. I mean, the faith is not ours to change. The doctrine of the church is not ours to change in order to fit society or become more culturally relevant, whatever. So everybody, look, let's ask this, this saintly bishop, this holy bishop, to help us all to reignite our love for the apostolic faith and to thank God that that faith he revealed to us in Jesus Christ has been given to us in 2021, untouched over the last 2,000 years, all because of the gift of apostolic succession. We pray to help our bishops to combat the ideological and opinionated interpretations that genuinely still to this day threaten the unity of the church. St. Arrhenius, pray for us.